even 2025, there's no one single known cause of uh, varicose veins, uh, also known as chronic venous insufficiency. Um, there's no gene that is uh, identified towards it. There's no uh, one infection that can cause it. Um, but what we do know are strong associations, meaning to say that you know people, uh, certain people are more prone to getting varicose veins, and those can be as uh, simple as a gender difference. Uh, uh, being female, uh, your your risk of getting uh, varicose veins is uh, two to one, female to male. Um, you know, it's more common in women, so to say. But it also means that men are not immune to it. Um, it sometimes can run in families. So while we don't have a proven genetic uh, uh, link, uh, very often my patients, they, you know, they will tell me, oh, my mom had varicose veins, my auntie, my grandma also. So we know there's a familial trait that can be passed on to generations. But sometimes they skip generations, so it's also hard to say. And then, of course, uh, you know, the things that, uh, sometimes predisposed to patients, uh, uh, things like their profession, if they if they need to stand a lot. So a lot of my patients are those who are in sales. So they are on feet uh, for long periods of time, hairdressers, air stewardess. Uh, so those are also some associations. And uh, of course, any sort of injury to the veins before, like deep vein clot, superficial vein clot. So those are all uh, associated factors. But in so far, what are the main causes? One single cause that actually we don't we don't really know yet. Okay, so is varicose veins is very common, and if you leave it untreated, it's only logical because uh, of the effect of gravity. Uh, one big part of the varicose veins or venous reflux, uh, the vein blood flow reversing direction going back down to the feet is gravity. So with time, as we live, because we live our lives upright, we don't live our lives supine. You don't want to live your life in bed all day. Uh, logically, then with time, it will get worse. So worse means that you get more symptoms. Those varicosities can get bigger. Uh, more varicosities form. They can be quite uncomfortable uh, to the extent that sometimes the legs, you know, for some patients, after two hours of standing, you know, they really have to sit down and rest for 30 minutes. So those kind of patterns of symptoms can affect their work, their performance, their livelihood. And if it progresses on to more severe forms where now we see skin changes, uh, they're more prone to skin infections like cellulitis. And of course, the most severe form of varicose veins or chronic venous insufficiency, they can cause patients to develop wounds uh, those wounds come spontaneously. They are venous ulcers. Some of these uh, varicosities, especially those really thin uh, right underneath the skin, they can get traumatized and they can bleed. Uh, and some of those bleeding, uh, they can be quite substantial. They need to go to the accidents and emergency for treatment. The question implied that the patients already have varicose veins. So I'll try and answer best in the form of for patients who don't have varicose veins yet, how do you prevent them? How do you prevent from getting them? That's number one. The second one, well, what about patients who already has varicose veins? How do you prevent it from getting worse? If I hear you correctly. So for the first cohort where you haven't have developed any varicose veins, um, again, it's not reasonable to tell the patients don't stand, don't walk, don't sit. Because then you're telling them not to live a, a full life. So you can't really stop varicose veins from occurring if they're going to occur. But what you can do is that if you identify yourself as being risks to it, uh, and the risk would include things like, you know, being overweight, you might want to lose weight. If you smoke, you might want to cut down on smoke or give smokes down altogether. You can't change uh, whether you're a man or woman. Those things, forget it. You know, there's no point changing it. But if you're in a profession where it involves a lot of standing, then maybe you want to consider wearing compression socks most of the time to support it and try and prevent any sort of disease from happening. Um, for women especially, uh, during pregnancy, especially during the third trimester, it would be good to be able to wear compression socks to mitigate uh, varicose veins from, from occurring. But it is also a challenging time because oftentimes with all the hormones um, they're hot, they're bothered, and you know, 
the prospect of wearing, having to wear compression socks every day isn't particularly a uh, attractive one for patients. But yeah, it will help, especially the third trimester, you know, the patients are pregnant. If they wear compression socks, you can actually prevent some of the varicosities from forming. For those who already have varicose veins, then what I can say is, you know, wear the compression socks. Wear it, right? It helps. It is clinically proven to do two things. The first of which is that if you have symptoms, uh, all the symptoms get better. And the second thing that is clinically proven to do is that it will at least halt the progression of the disease. If you're CEAP class two, that's where you'll stay so long as the socks are on the legs. Uh, so it also depends on compliance. two real things that patients can do. Uh, the first, in terms of managing, uh, you know, these varicose veins that are already there, they can opt for conservative uh, option, which again, comes in compression socks. So if they wear the compression socks, you can actually halt the progression of the disease. Therefore, they will not develop, you know, recurrent cellulitis. They won't develop uh, ulcers or bleeding. Why? Is because once you get the situation under control, then the skin of the leg then and only then has a chance to become healthy and heal itself. And once it heals itself, then they are less prone to getting these problems. The second uh, option is that, well, uh, have surgery. We can actually have definitive methods to close the refluxing, the problematic vein, so that that problem that happens every day when they wake up, the reflux, the backflow of the venous blood back down to the feet, so that it ceases, it stops. So the real two options is that, you know, you don't want complications. You can do it conservatively, but conservatively comes in a very attractive form of compression socks. Uh, alternatively, if that doesn't work for the patient, for example, I had a patient who is a man and he's a lifeguard. How can you expect him to wear compression socks when you are a lifeguard? You can't. So for those patients, then we will opt or encourage earlier intervention uh, than not.